one of my most exciting parts of the trip is here. We're in Dollywood with Amber and Joseph and his vitamin water. Margaret ended up bailing on us because she wasn't feeling real good and decided to take a day of rest. But I'm excited. Lightning Rod and Thunderhead and a bunch of other stuff. And it's going to be fun today, right? They just aren't excited. Isn't it sad? At least they don't show it. I'll just beat it into them, right? I don't like fun. Yeah, you can tell. Okay, so we are in 25 minutes before park scheduled opening. You can see Chasing Rainbows, you can see Lightning Rod up there. So we're really hoping it's open, and hey, look, it's Dolly, 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 Dolly. Gee, wonder why there'd be so much Dolly here. I don't understand. Okay, not open yet, but you can see they're already starting to gather. And check that out. Sweet. So we just got off of Lightning Rod, first ride of the day. Really cool. What do you think, Joseph? That was not what I expected. Not what, what were you expecting? I don't know. I didn't expect anything really, but it wasn't what I expected. Even if I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Line says it's only under 15 minutes, so I think we're going to try to take another round. Just awesome stuff. So we just got off of our second ride on Lightning Rod. Awesome ride. Did just get to see something though that my son's very sympathetic for and unfortunately I'm being a jerk and I'm not. <laughs> As we were coming through the second half, we watched a cell phone go flying off of the ride, just kind of float in the air and then disappear. Yeah, somebody had their cell phone out. And Joseph, who's lost his phone on rides a couple times, is sad for him. I'm not person came off they actually had somebody who wasn't on the ride waiting that they could have handed their phone to they had no pocket so they had nothing to put it in as far as I'm concerned you were dumb enough to take it on the ride oh well this make it less terrible so. game shot ah! last time we were in this part of the park was 14 years ago when it had first opened this is the path heading up to Thunderhead trees were a little smaller back then so it's nice to see how it's grown in and greened in and shaded up a little bit this is all the people who didn't like Thunderhead well I can see why they didn't like it if they're dead now dead people don't ride coasters next up is Thunderhead when we rode this last it was opening year nice and smooth we'll see how it's changed in 14 years Okay, there we go. We just got off of Thunderhead, first ride on it in 14 years. So, knew it was going to change a little bit, a little rougher, but still great ride. What do you think, Amber? It was fun. Yeah. It was really shaky, but it was fun. Amber's the one that's really ultra sensitive to stuff like this. So, if she says it's fun, it's a good ride. We were in the very front row, so that may affect it some. And then, what about you, sir? It's not being. That means good. Sort of. Look at that cut. Weird. Big, big cushions. <laughs> big. <laughs> nice little intersection of different things here. You see Thunderhead in the background. There's Whistle Punk Chaser coming by around now. That's their new kitty coaster. I don't think they're going to let me ride it for some reason. There's the drop tower. Incredible view up there. Uh, Wish there was like an observation tower that we could take cameras or something. That would be really cool. And then we are right next to Mystery Mine. There goes Wing Rider. I can, can't remember the name. Sadly, Mystery Mine doesn't look like it's operating right now. Bummer. So hopefully it'll be open later and we can catch that then. Love the theming on it. River Battle. Gee, this looks strangely familiar to Silver Dollar City. Oh, look! It's River Blast!
These are very cool. The lines tend to be long, but if you want to cool off, this is a great place to do it. So this is Fire Chaser Express, which has a 35 minute long wait. So we're not gonna do that right now. But it looks pretty cool. You can see the one train here waiting to unload. Watch how they load it into the station. Backwards. Time for Wild Eagle, their wing rider. You gotta love that hill there. What do you think? You were flying. That reminded me of Montu. Montu? Smoother, not quite as forceful. At least from the front row. Okay, so we're gonna head around and do it again? Sure. From the back this time? I am good with this side B. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we just rode in the back. What'd you like better, back or front? You like front? Which one? Joseph? Yes. Yes. Joseph is just a yes man. I like the back. This time we were on the right side of the train, so if you're in the station, it's the left turn. It was awesome! <laughs> she agrees. Yeah! It's, what, 12.30, so park's been open two and a half hours. We got two rides on uh, Lightning Rod, got Thunderhead in, got a couple rides on Wild Eagle, did the River Battle, um, the Drop Tower, and a couple other things too, so we're doing pretty good for two hours. So this is looking down to Crafters Junction. You can see all the trees and how shaded and landscaped. Very pretty park. The theming is awesome here. So definitely enjoying it. So this is one of the things I really liked about Dollywood last time we were here was the Wings of America Theater. They actually have a whole bald eagle conservation program here. They're commonly called buzzards, but correctly called vulture. I'd like you all to meet our black vulture buzz. Now buzz is This is an import from Branson's Silver Dollar City, Blazing Fury. For a while, this was actually a Silver Dollar City park, and this is one that they brought in and put here way back then. And one thing that's really funny, <laughs> the stuck firefighter. So we just got off a of blazing fury, and I'm gonna have to change some things I've said about it in the past. What do you think? It was definitely creepier. Creepier, yeah. Okay, we in a parallel dimension. <laughs> Basically, blazing fury, as I remembered it, 14 years ago, I thought was almost the exact same ride as Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City. The layout is the same, the trains are longer, but the scenery, um, different. Very different. The mannequins look kind of like corpses compared to rag dolls. Yeah, they look like half Hobbit. Hobbit corpses. Hobbit corpses, and yes, yeah, definitely creepier. More of a firefighter scene thing. The covered bridge part of it was really neat, but just a strange little ride compared to Fire in the Hole. I guess I've gotten used to Silver Dollar City. So you can tell it's the same general ride, but totally different story. No bald knobbers. 14 years ago when I was last here, this was pretty much the end of the park. The Tennessee Tornado, which I rode way back then. But now it continues on there, so they've added a whole lot of park on. This is Crafters Row. You see the big blacksmith shop where they are in there working. And there it is. 
Oh, all sorts of other stuff. You can see the water slough running above us. Candles. There's pottery. General store. All sorts of neat stuff. And with this, we're going to make a right turn and go to Daredevil Falls. Woohoo! So this is Daredevil Falls, one of the largest flume rides, and I am standing in a very dangerous position, because if you look around, it's all wet here. There's a boat. Great to see a wave up close and personal. Yep. Fun little ride, mostly wet up top, not on the legs, don't get drenched, but get Splash a good bit, right? No, it's a lie. Everything's a lie. Do I look wet? The cake is a lie. I haven't seen any cake. Have you seen cake? There's no cake. Where's the cake? I think the piano sprung a leak. It's not supposed to do that. One thing I like about the Hershen Parks, there's the chapel. No Sunday morning services, 11.30. Hymn sings during the rest of the week. Remember saw free samples. There she goes. She's charging free food. I'm just gonna try one of the hot sauces. Oh, is these barbecue? She just gotta figure out which one. It's number six. Whatever number six is. So side road off of the Craftsman Plaza. Heads up to another attraction you'll find here in pretty much no other park called the Mountain Slide Winder. Silver Dollar City in Missouri used to actually have one and they took theirs out for various reasons. So we're gonna go check it out here. Yes, they have a barn swing here as well. <laughs> kind of a fun area. Kids splash and play area. The mountain slide winder here. And the barn swing coming to a spot. And then they closed it for lightning. Bummer. But hey, when there's lightning in the area, you gotta do what they gotta do. We just got done seeing my people. Uh, one of the shows this actually stars parts of Dolly Parton's family here. We can definitely say we got some mixed reviews here. So Amber? I thought the music was good, but I also thought it was really awkward how Dolly stands there behind the screen nodding the whole time. The first time I've seen a show where Dolly Parton is actually on this video screen behind the stage, and the family and performers are interacting with her, and she's there the whole show as if she's in the show, but she's not there. So it was very interesting, and they're playing music along with her video singing and stuff. I, I thought it was kind of neat. Amber thought it was awkward. I just, I can't help but imagine her standing there in a silent room with the camera, just nodding at no one. That's true, we've been behind the scenes stuff on film, but yes, I can, I did that too. Okay, and then there's Joseph. Joseph really doesn't want to appear on camera because... Well, I mean, I liked a couple of the songs, but... But... They get the country. He's not a country music fan at all. Although my wife isn't here because she's back at our uh, cabin rest and she would have really suffered because she hates country music. I grew up with it. I like country music. I'm the one that probably enjoyed the show the most. I really enjoyed it. Joseph survived it because it was country music and that's probably good. Is that a good word for it, Joseph? Survive? Yeah. yeah. So I enjoyed it. Amber was like, yeah, okay. Not bad. It was 55 minutes though in air conditioning on a warm day, so that was good. I enjoyed it. If you like country music and you like Dolly Parton, you'll really enjoy the show. If you don't, mm, we finally got in the mountain slide winder. We were actually right on the loading platform earlier and they shut it down for lightning right as we were about to get on. So we went back again and my son, nice guy that he is, he sat out so Amber and I could ride. Had a lot of fun. It wasn't as wet as I remember it being. Got misted a little bit, but nowhere near soaked. But a lot of fun. It's too bad Silver Dollar City in Missouri doesn't have theirs anymore. But this was a lot of fun to still have it. Neat little ride. This is Dollywood's engine here. A little bigger than Silver Dollar City. In fact, it's maybe one of the largest engines they run in the theme park. She's coming back there. There's the Tinder car. Nice big water tank.
All right, so this is Montana, who actually works on the train here, met up with us. He's gonna give us a little bit of history of this thing. Okay, so this engine that we have is uh, engine number 192. Her name is Klondike Katie. She was built in 1943 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works out of Eddystone, Pennsylvania. She weighs roughly 211,000 pounds. After she was completed, she was sent to work on the White Pass and Yukon Railroad out of Skagway, Alaska. While she was in Alaska, they used her to build the Alcan Military Highway. That was a military uh, installation to help protect the new state of Alaska from an invasion during World War II. She stayed on with the White Pass in Yukon until her retirement in 1960, and then in 1961 she was sold to an East Tennessee theme park known as Rebel Railroad. Rebel Railroad then progressed into Gold Rush Junction, Silver Dollar City, Tennessee, and now present-day Dollywood. Now our other locomotive that we have here that's not running today is engine number 70. We call her Cinderella. Cinderella was built in 1938 by Baldwin and very similar storyline as to this engine. Both used to build the Alcan Military Highway. Cinderella is a slightly larger. She weighs 230,000 pounds and has a boiler operating pressure of 200 pounds per square inch, whereas this locomotive has a operating pressure of 185 pounds per square inch. And see, what you can't really see is they were actually shoveling coal. This is actually still a coal-fired steam five engine. Five tons of coal a day. Five tons of coal a day. That's a lot of shoveling. I love how with Dollywood they've actually got to close off the walkways like this. So here's the moment for all the train nerds. My daughter's not feeling real good, but I ran into Montana and Trevor, who both work out here at Dollywood. Had a lot of fun, got to ride Mystery Mine with them, as well as Fire Chaser. So had had a lot of fun. Trevor survived both. I did. <laughs> so, but if you come out, ride the train, say hi to those two. I'm very grateful because they're a lot of the reason I was able to be out here today with my family. When you go to parks, don't be this lady. Stay out of the gardens. So way back when we were here, in 2004 moving right here this leather and hat company is actually where i bought my duster coat that i wore at silver dollar city so when you see that picture of me in my silver dollar city conductor's outfit that big long duster coat it came from right here at dollywood